I want to show you how you can create your own custom function. Now there are lots of functions within Excel, but you might have a calculation that doesn't fit any of those and you've got your own and you want to create it. So rather than having to put the calculation into the formula bar and then copy that and maybe use that on other sheets, you can actually create your own function. And within that function, you can have things like if statements as well. And you can see that on this cell that I'm on here, I've got an if statement at the top here, and it's got nested ifs, of which there is a limit of only having seven ifs. And you can see it can start to get a little bit untidy. And this isn't even with any particular big calculations, it's just returning text. So I created my own function, and that's what's in this workbook, and I've opened it. So it's a workbook that has been saved as a macro enabled one. And you can see that because I've opened it, macros have this enable content come up when you open them. That's to stop any sort of hacks and things like that. By the way, this works the same really whether you're using Mac or Windows. So I'm just gonna enable that content. And I'm just gonna say, yes, it's from a trusted document. And you can see here, I've created my own sort of grading system and it's got a function I created called grade calc. And then I just simply choose the cell I want. This here, that's the argument that you're gonna input. And you can also have more than one. So I created these grades here using the if function. This one is using the if statement in a custom function. We're gonna have a look at that in a moment. I'm gonna show you how to create it. I'm also gonna show you how you can add this in so that the function comes up every time you open it. At the moment, this function is in this workbook, so it comes up when this workbook is open. But you'd have to open the workbook. We're gonna make an add-in, and I'm gonna do that in the next video. So when you've seen this one, check out the other one on how to do that so that it comes up each time. And then you could distribute that around to your colleagues that might want to use this as well, or family or friends if it happens to be like that. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that. But let's just start by taking a look at just one other sheet that I've got, which is one based on commission. So on this sheet, we're gonna calculate commission based on the sales here. So they get a percentage, so 5% if greater than 100,000 and 10% if over 250,000. And then how many years that they've worked there, and if they've worked there for five or more, then they get an extra thousand in there, so being very generous. And we can do that by having two arguments when we actually create the function, and you could have more. So the arguments are, you know, when you click on your insert function here, it's, let me just choose this if function, these boxes here are the arguments, and we're gonna show you how we create those. So the thing we need to do is get into VBA, Visual Basic for Applications, and there's a module for that. It's what some people think of as macros. And we need the developer tab, which is up at the top here on the ribbon here. Now, if you can't see that, and it's the same tab as well on uh, the Mac. If you can't see that, the way to get it back, well, one way is to go into File, choose Options, and over here where it says Customize Ribbon, on the right here, you want to make sure that developer is ticked. Now. I'm just gonna cancel that. So on the Mac, what you wanna do is go into the Excel menu, choose preferences, then ribbon and toolbar, and you'll see again here, you need to make sure that the developer is ticked. Okay, so with the developer switched on, I now go to that tab and you can see here, it's got Visual Basic. Now you can see it pops up saying, if you press Alt F11, that will also take you straight into it. And you can use that Alt F11 to switch back. If you're using something like a MacBook, MacBook Pro, or some other laptops, you need to do the function Alt or Option key, and then F11. So we're just gonna start off here, and we're gonna take a look at this function that I've got. So let's just click on Visual Basic. Now, it's here in another module, and you can see it's got this sheet here, and it starts off as a function, I typed this in, this is the name that I gave it. So that's the name of the function, just like if you choose if, look up and so on. And that's what will appear when you do insert function. The score 
over here, that is the argument. That's the box that you fill in that you choose like the cell like B4. And then I'm using the if statements down here. And you can see it's a lot neater because you can have it down like this and just easier to do. And you can have more than seven ifs. You can have loads and loads of them, however many you want to do, you can put here. And you can see it's just neatly done. It's got if score, that's the B4 here that you're going to be entering, is less than 45, then grade calc equals fail. Okay, so where I've got this grade calc is the same as this grade calc here. What this does is this is the value, whatever's after it, that equals, that is what is going to be returned to the spreadsheet. Okay, so we're going to actually have a go at actually creating this in a moment. I'm going to show you how to do this um, from scratch. To switch back to the workbook, I can just click on this little icon here. Again, I could do Alt F11 or uh, Function Alt or Option F11. So let's just click on that and it takes me back to here. So I'm just going to delete this. Let's just clear that. And what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to delete this as well. I'm going to do it just by doing a cut. So let's just get rid of that. I'm going to close that. Okay, so what we're going to do, where, how I got to this point was I needed to create a new module and I'm putting this inside this workbook. Now, if you want this to be across many workbooks, you might just want to have this in its own brand new workbook. Um, and that's what you would probably do with the add-in, to be honest. So if you want to share this across different workbooks, put them all into a separate one. What you need to do first is create a new module. And you do that by going into Insert and Module. And you come up with this blank space here where you can put in your function. So what you need to do is start off by typing in function. Let's call this one my grades. And let's just have that score as the argument. Right, when I press enter, it automatically puts in end function. It's capitalized the F there, so you know that it's done the right thing. And we're just going to do this very basically. So I just do if score, I'm deliberately doing this in lowercase, is less than 45, then I don't know if you've done if statements before, but then I then just, uh, I'm tabbing in because it makes it easier to line up and just read. So then I'm typing in my grades, not capitalizing anything again, because you'll see very cleverly, just like it did with the score there, when I press enter, it puts in the capitals in the right place. By doing that, I know that that's correct. I can now then add another one in. So I can do, if I was doing something very simple, it would be else and then my grades equals pass. So a little less involved than the one that I showed you, but, and if I do end if as one word and press enter, so, so that ends my if there, that would just give me fail and pass. So that's how you can create a very simple function. What I'm going to do is just, let's just paste in what I cut from before. Let's just get rid of that there because I don't need that and I don't need that. So that's left over. I copied too much before. And that is my function. So although I copied and pasted that across, this grade calc here needs to change to my grades. Actually, it'd be easier for me to just change this here to grade calc. And just so that it's different, I'm not going to capitalize the whole thing and you can see it's changed it there. Right, let's go back to the workbook. Let's just click here. Now I should have my function in here and I'm going to click on my insert function in the formula bar. It's on the most recently used category here. Let's click here and I'm going to go down here to user defined. That's your custom function list down right down there. And there it is, grade calc. So anything that's open, that will appear here as a function. And you can see it's got the grade calc and then score. 
that's what is going to fill in that's going to be the box to fill in so let's click on OK click here click on OK there we have it I'm just going to double click in the bottom right hand corner which will then fill that list look at that that's how you do it right so let's do one here for the commission okay we're going to create one called my commission and we're going to quickly do that so here I am on this commission sheet let's go to visual basic let's create a new function I can put it directly underneath here so let's just type in function my commission and we want the sales comma years so that's how you separate out the different arguments you just simply put a comma in now one of the reasons I don't capitalize things like function and so on is so that when I press enter I know I've done something right because you know you can do a typo if it capitalizes the f in function and so on you know you've actually typed it correctly it's so easy to make a typo so that's my reason for doing that okay so what we're going to do just very very quickly let's just do this I'm going to say if sales is greater than or equal to 100,000 then we're going to do my commission is going to be equal to sales times point 0.1 oh, point oh 0.05 so that's five percent else if sorry that should be one word else if sales are greater than or equal to 250,000 then my so you can see I'm not actually capitalizing the C there is going to be equal to sales times 0.1 and then I'm just going to do an else which is if it's neither of those two then my commission equals zero and let's just do the end if there by the way when I untab I'm pressing the backspace key to do that okay so that's what it's doing so far so now I want to determine whether or not they should get an extra thousand because they've been there for over five years so that's going to be greater than five years not greater than or equal to which I might have said before so let's just do this let's just add in another if my commission equals my commission that it's already calculated plus 1000 I could space all of these out a bit better and then end if okay that's it so now if I go back to my Excel workbook click there let's go to the commission here I'm in that cell let's click on insert function it's still on user defined and hey there you go there is my commission and you can see it's now got the two arguments there let's click on OK the sales is that one the years is that one it's telling me that it's eight and a half thousand I happen to know that if they had been there for less and we will do that let's click on OK and let's just fill that if I made that five years it'd be less a thousand make it six and so on so you can see here that if I make that three years six years so on and you can see that's working perfectly so I think you can see that it's much easier sometimes to create these functions if you're doing lots of ifs or things like that it can be so much easier to create it in a custom function rather than having some complicated one with lots of nests and so on inside there so just one thing to add if you've not actually saved an Excel workbook that has macros in it is that you do need to save it as a special workbook doesn't matter whether you're using Windows or a Mac if you go into file choose save as you need to choose from the drop down box here and because it's already I've already saved it before as an Excel macro enabled workbook you'll see it's got XLS M here it's from this drop down here it's the second one down so you've got the normal one which is the 
Excel SX here, which is just an Excel workbook. And then there's this one, which you need to do whether you're putting in functions or macros. So if I choose that, and I'm just gonna put this here as 2020, I hit save and that's done. So please remember to do that. When you do open it, it will ask you to enable that content. It's all to stop any sort of hacking going on. So that's how you can create a custom function in Excel. I'm now gonna show you in the next video how you can actually add that in. But before I do go to that, if you do like this one, do click on like, share, and subscribe.